and I don't get laid any less than you do. I probably get laid more than you do. But it's because I laid, I lay down the law. I step up to the plate. I draw the fucking line in the sand. I say no. I am not doing what you say. I have an ex-wife. I'll tell you which one it was, MTL4. I would come home. You don't know who MTL4 was? Get on Facebook or Twitter. Ask people who MTL4 is. They'll tell you. Okay. MTL4. I come home. Show ends at 7 Pacific time. And by 8 o'clock, I walk in the door. You know, did my thing. After the show, you talk to the guys, record a couple of commercials, get in the car, you drive home. Okay, now it's 8 o'clock. Walk to the front door of my home. And I say to MTL4, um, what are we having for dinner? And MTL4 says the following. Oh, I got hungry, so I ate already. And I say to MTL4, well, got any leftovers? Got anything left over? No. She said, I got hungry, so I ate. So I go to the fucking kitchen, and I reach into the cabinet, and I pull out some pots and pans to make myself some fucking dinner. By the way, MTL4 had sat home all day reading books, watching foreign films, going out to Starbucks. Uh, magically, she had lost her job three months after we got together and never got another job. So she's sitting home. She's feeding her fucking face when she feels like it. She just had a couple of fucking chips or slice of pizza while she was fucking up. She, she eats her whole fucking day. I'm like, come on, she eats her whole day. There I am, pull out the pot. She feels like a meal. She makes a meal out of the kitchen. She was standing up my shoulder. She's going, you don't make that in the frying pan. That's the wrong size pot. And I turned around. I have a galley kitchen. I turned around to her and I said, well, if you want to step in here and, and get the job done, you can. This is after she has sat home all day and has no fucking job. Okay. She has sat home at eight and six. And I'm home at eight. And she said, well, I'm sorry. I was hungry, so I ate. Now she's criticizing the way I'm making fucking dinner. By the way, when I was done making dinner, did she sit at the table with me while I ate my dinner? You know, have a... You know, a glass of wine or a cup of tea or something. Sit with me so I can talk about my day. No. After she's done telling me that I'm cooking dinner wrong, I'm doing it all wrong, after I make it anyway, she leaves me and goes back to the living room to continue watching Antiques Roadshow. I'm not making this up. Any other night it was Antiques Roadshow on PBS. Ally McBeal, that'll give you an idea of what year it might have been, okay? Going back to the living room to watch Doctor Who on the Sci-Fi Channel, whatever. And I sat alone eating the dinner I made. Other nights I came home, fuck this, I don't want to hear about how I'm wrong, 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 I'm using the wrong pot, I'm using the wrong pan, I'm doing everything wrong. I don't want to fucking hear it. So one night I come home with a Subway sandwich, $5 fucking footlong, one of those 11-inch footlong sandwiches. I come home with that. I sit in the fucking breakfast nook adjacent to the kitchen. And I'm sitting by myself at the table eating a fucking sub sandwich while my ex is sitting in the other room. Yeah. She's watching fucking Star Trek marathons on TV and I'm sitting in the other room eating by myself. Isn't that wonderful? Fuck getting married. Fuck relationships. Fuck having anybody living in my house. Fuck it! No one's gonna fucking tell me what to do. No one's gonna fucking tell me I'm wrong, wrong, wrong. I get tired of it. If I'm so fucking wrong, get the hell out. Pay your own rent. Buy your own fucking groceries. Buy your own pots and pans. Do everything perfectly. You just hit the fucking bricks. Get the fuck out. Get out. At one time in my life, I was a pussy, but not anymore. Now I spend my life educating pussies.
telling guys like you that you have to fucking man up, sack up, you have to tell her to fuck off. No criticism. I don't want to hear your fucking criticism, okay? You don't like the way I drive? Fuck you. You don't like the way I cook? Fuck you more. You don't like the way I act? You don't like the way I talk? You don't think my jokes are funny? Why are you still here? Hit the fucking bricks, bitch. Get the fuck out. Makes me angry just thinking about it. Here I was, driving in my own car, listening to my own Wednesday show, hearing all of these, uh, these blogs that were written about, uh, you know, romance and, you know, the fact that you have to, uh, in order to be uh, in a real romance, you have to clean out the, uh, the waste at the bottom of the refrigerator, you have to unclog the toilet three times a week, and you have to do what she needs you to do. Nothing in there about what she fucking does for you. She sits in there like, like the fucking queen, ordering you around, telling you all the things you do wrong. Why the fuck would we want to put up with that shit? I won't. I won't do it. You know, if you want to have sex with me and go back to your apartment, you want to live in your apartment where everything is just so and you do everything perfectly, then that's fine. That's okay. I don't care what you do when I'm not around. But I don't care what your opinion is of my jokes. I don't care what your opinion is of my cooking. I don't care what your opinion is about my career, about what time I go home from work. I don't give a fuck. If I want to hang out with the boys till 10 o'clock at night and drink beer and hang out in the studio... You better be prepared to live with it. Otherwise, fuck off. You think I'm being harsh? I'm just being honest. You know, one of the things I was trying to get at in that show about that blog is this. I know whether you call in or not, I know you guys are sitting out there taking orders. From fucking headquarters, you are being told what the fuck to do every hour of the day and night. How often do you walk out of a room and then, at, here's how used to it you are. You're walking out of a room and then you're explaining where you're going. Have you ever been in a relationship where you turned around to, I'm going to tell you about one person one time. I'm going to tell you about one. She was constantly asking me what I was doing and where I was going, constantly. Have you ever had to give an answer like this? Have you ever had to say what I'm about to say? Here it is. I'm going to the bathroom because I need to take a shit. It's going to take about 10 minutes and I'm going to be in the toilet. Dropping some, uh, dropping a deuce and then I'm going to come back when I'm done. Have you ever had to make an explanation? Have you ever had to discuss your bodily functions with somebody who starts questioning why you're in the bathroom? How long you're going to be in the bathroom? How about people who think you're sick because you're taking a shit? What are you doing in there? What are you doing in there? It's a fucking bathroom. I'm sitting on the fucking toilet. Have you ever found yourself having to explain where you're going? Do you know I've had to walk out my front door and I've had to say, I'm pulling the car around to the garage. I've had to explain it. I don't do that anymore. Okay? I don't do that anymore. Anyone doesn't like it or feels insecure, hit the bricks. Hit the fucking bricks. Okay? I am going to cook the way I want and I am going to come and go as I please. I'm going to do what I want. I'm going to have the friends that I want. I'm going to smoke weed. I'm going to drink beer. I'm going to drink bourbon. I don't give a fuck what you think. And I know you boys. So many of you don't have the fucking balls. So many of you. You're just so happy to be getting your crank yanked.